take you to the through to the next two chapters, uh, the chapter number eight, which is the operational aspects of portfolio managers. Uh, the first thing is which entities can invest in PMS. So as defined by SEBI, uh, the following entities can invest in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the PMSs, uh, which are uh, individuals, non-resident Indians as per RBI guidelines, Hindu undivided family, proprietorship firms, association of persons, uh, partnership firms, limited liability, partnership firms, trust, and body corporate. So these are the these are the entities which can invest in a PMS. Uh, the minimum, as everyone knows, and if uh, if you're not aware, the minimum investment required in a PMS account is a minimum of 50 lakh, 50 lakh of rupees. Uh, disclosures to prospective clients. Uh, moving to the next point, key disclosures include uh, his, uh, you know, giving to the client what is the history, the present business, and the background of the portfolio manager. Uh, to disclose any penalties which would have been levied uh, to the, uh, on the portfolio manager, any pending litigations or proceedings, finding of any inspection, all this is to be disclosed to the prospective investor in the PMS. Uh, it should include all the services that are, that are being offered by the, uh, by the portfolio manager. Uh, it also should uh, mention the risk factors that are, uh, you know, that are associated with investing in the PMS. Uh, which could be, you know, uh, related to market risk, providing and pro uh, providing clearly that there's no assurance or guarantee that the objective of the investments can be achieved, uh, indicating clearly that the past performance of the portfolio does not indicate its future performance, uh, the risk arising from investment approach, investment objective, uh, in, uh, investment strategy, and asset allocation, and any any such kind of associated risks. Uh, the, uh, the the disclosure should clearly uh, show what is the performance of the portfolio manager uh, till date. Uh, it should also disclose uh, what are the audit observations in respect of the portfolio manager. Uh, what uh, the disclosure document to the client should also, should also mention the nature of expenses that will be incurred uh, on behalf of the client by the portfolio manager. Uh, it should clearly say what is the what are the investor services uh, available, uh, the name and address and telephone number of the investor relations office officer who shall attend to the investor queries and complaints and grievel redressal and dispute special uh, settlement mechanism should be clearly informed to the uh, prospective investors. Moving on to the best practices for disclosures, uh, global investment performance standard GIPS. Have uh, you know have defined ethical standards for calculating and presenting investment performance based on principles of fair representation and full disclosure. This is particularly important when you know you are you have a uh, you have you have composite asset classes as part of the strategy. It should describe what is the benchmark uh, which is going to be used uh, for uh, comparing the performance of the portfolio. Uh, the fees. This it should clearly. Uh, 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 mention or should clearly provide for fees and the methodology of calculation of those fees. Uh, the additional risk measures that will be, you know, uh, what are the material risk in that, uh, you know, in the composite strategy, how uh, is, are, is if any illiquid investments are part of that strategy, or if there is any derivative strategy, what is the, what is the risk uh, of leverage in the particular uh, uh, strategy. Uh, it should clearly define what is the composite description because composite is an aggregation of one or more portfolios that are managed according to the investment mandate and the objective and therefore it should be clearly defined uh, to the investors. Uh, process of onboarding, uh, process of onboarding of clients. Uh, the important factor, uh, important factor to look here is the customer life cycle in terms of client onboarding and reporting. Uh, in terms of client uh, so, uh, in terms of client onboarding, before the client is onboarded, the disclosure document should have been provided to the investor and it should be read, uh, the, uh, all the prospective investors should have gone through that disclosure document. The disclosure document, hard and soft, uh, soft copy should also be made available at portfolio manager's website at all times. The next step is fulfilling the KYC requirements, uh, investors need to fulfill all the mandatory requirements to be eligible, which are to be eligible to invest in PMS. The KYC process has been and has, under, has to be undergone by all investors in compliance with the regulations and prevention 
regulations of the prevention of money laundering act 2020 2002 uh, the uh, the duly sub the form which has been duly filled has to be submitted uh, which should give general information about the client which is like name the address the occupation uh, the the introducer and the incomes uh, you know the incomes of last three financial years uh, investment profile of the client which is basically investments experience uh, regarding securities indicative percentage of total investment portfolio proposed to be invested with the portfolio manager uh, overall investment goals such as capital appreciation regular income and regular uh, other and other incomes uh, next step is content of agreement between the portfolio manager and the investor uh, the investment objectives and services to be provided should be part should is a mandatory requirement should be part of the agreement. I think most of these points have been covered by Aditya, but I will go through them very fast. Uh, the period of the contract, period of the contract, and provision for early termination, if any, types of instrument, proportion of exposure to those kind of in, uh, to those investments, the fees payable to the portfolio manager. This should be clearly uh, clearly mentioned in the agreement between the portfolio manager and the investor. The tenure of portfolio investments, the investment strategies, areas, and any restrictions imposed by the client regarding uh, investment in a specific company or industry. So, uh, any any kind of restriction by the uh, by the investor in terms of investment due to any compliance related issue or uh, any other issue which a client prefers should uh, should form part of the agreement so that the portfolio manager is aware of how to invest the client's money. Uh, terms for early withdrawal of funds and securities with the client. Uh, attendant risk involved in the management of the portfolio. So all the risk that a portfolio manager forces should be mentioned in the uh, in the in the agreement between the portfolio manager and the investor. Uh, it should also mention clearly how the custody of securities will be handled. Uh, moving to other operational matters. Uh, 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 SEBI has provided a portfolio manager shall also provide an option to clients to onboard it, to be onboarded directly without the intermediation of persons engaged in distribution services. So portfolio manager shall prominently disclose in his disclosure document, uh, marketing material on its website about the option of direct onboarding of POS. As, as you know, and as we discussed, minimum corpus of 50 lakhs, which could be available either through funds or securities or a combination of both. Uh, the regulations also provide that uh, a PMS investment can be done jointly. So investment, the investment records are created in the name of the first holder. All the benefits, though, though they flow to the uh, to such as dividends, uh, interest, and redemption proceeds, go to the first holder, but it can be held in a joint way. Uh, what are the liabilities in case of a default? If the portfolio manager contravenes uh, any of these provisions of the SEBI Act. Or rules and regulations as prescribed by SEBI, uh, the, uh, the portfolio manager's certif uh, certificate of registration could be suspended for a specific period, uh, could be cancelled uh, permanently. Uh, there is a scope to prohibit portfolio manager to take up any new assignment or contract or launch a new scheme uh, for the period specified by SEBI. Uh, it can debar a, SEBI can debar a principal officer or of the portfolio manager from being employed or associated with any registered intermediary or other registered person for the period as specified in the order. Uh, it, can, it can leave the portfolio manager with a strict warning that, you know, uh, so in such contraventions do not repeat. Uh, uh, the redressal of investor grievances. The portfolio manager has to take adequate steps for redressal of grievances of the investor as Aditya mentioned in the in his uh, in his presentation, one month uh, from uh, the portfolio manager has one month to reply uh, from, from the receipt of the complaint uh, to uh, to solve the grievance and report to SEBI uh, and keep SEBI informed about the number and the nature of complaints that have been received by the portfolio manager. The portfolio manager is required to appoint a compliance officer who shall be responsible responsible for monitoring and red, uh, monitoring the redressal of investor grievances. Uh, the, the cost, uh, what are the cost and expenses and fees uh, which a portfolio manager is, uh, you know, allowed to uh, allowed to charge and which can be, uh, which has to be included in the, in the agreement. 
the portfolio is all manager is allowed to charge an investment management or an advisory fee uh, this is what we call as portfolio management fees this is for managing the uh, port portfolio of the client uh, the custodian and depository fee uh, which is basically uh, sorry coming back to the earlier point the investment management fee could be fixed fee or could be a com could be a variable fee structure or could be a combination of both fixed and uh, variable fee custodian and depository fee are these are basically fees related to op operation opening and operation of uh, dmat accounts custody charges such as transfer of shares uh and therefore in i mean any other fees which are uh, incurred in terms of in connection with the management of the uh, uh, management of the client's account uh the third is the registrar and transfer fee uh, which is basically payable to registrars or transfer agents in connection with transfer uh, transfer of securities or bonds brokerage is, brokerage and transaction cost uh, basically uh, brokerage is basically the uh, fee paid to the broker for execution of trades on the exchange uh for uh, on either side buying or selling and which should include which includes the stt or the stamp duty uh, etc brokerage is actually shall be charged to clients as an expense uh certification charges fund accounting charges and professional fees basically these are fees which are which may be payable to the uh, to the professionals like uh, chartered accountants bankers and others for management uh, efficient management of the uh, pms Uh, out of pocket and other incidental expenses charges in connection with day to day operations like service tax statutory levies and other charges can also be charged uh, to the investors uh, post the 2020 regulation sebi has uh, mandated that you know the maximum other other expenses that can be charged to the investor apart from investment management advisory fee and brokerage and transaction cost would be limited to 0.5% uh, of the per, per annum 0.5% per annum of the client's average daily asset assets under management the brokerage and transaction cost can be completely passed on and investment management fee is anyway uh, uh, you know uh, mentioned in the uh, is mentioned in the agreement between the client, portfolio manager and the client the last expense is the exit load uh, a client within if the client withdraws his money within a specific period an exit load can also be levied by the portfolio manager and that has already been discussed in the earlier slide uh, there are two more concepts of high watermark and hurdle rate this particularly is uh, important when a portfolio manager is charging a performance related fee so what is high watermark it's the highest value that the portfolio account has reached the portfolio manager charges performance based fee only on increase in the portfolio in excess of the previously achieved high watermark so uh, you know uh, so on the same uh, uh, so whenever there is years when the portfolios are down and then they recover the portfolio manager is not allowed to charge higher performance fee on on the amount that it has already uh, you know uh, charged uh, the hurdle rate is basically the profit sharing performance related fees are usually charged by portfolio manager upon exceeding a, a hurdle rate or a benchmark as is being specified in the agreement uh disclosures to the regulator uh, there are uh, two kinds of disclosure one is disclosure disclosures to sebi uh, sebi may ask portfolio manager to disclose information as and when required uh, including particulars regarding to management of portfolio any change in information uh, but, which, uh, or particular in respect of particulars uh, particularly previously furnished which have a bearing on the certificate uh, granted to him names of the clients uh, whose portfolio it has managed particulars relating to the net worth as specified in the regulation uh, regulation of sebi uh, there also could be regulate uh, regulate uh, this pms provider the portfolio manager may have to provide certain uh, information to the financial intelligence unit under the uh, prevention of money laundering act 2020 2002 sorry Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.